Good morning. Today's message will come from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 25. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 25. The reading of verses 1 through 10 will be the message for today. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 10. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forward to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They took they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they, were, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. I took our text today from verse 8. And the foolish said unto wise, Give us of your all, for our lamps are gone out. This morning I want to use for a subject, and I want to speak with you and preach to you a little while about what have I run out of? What have I run out of? Looking back at our life growing up, and I looked at this in two different ways. I looked at this as when I was a child, and I looked at this as when I was an adult. And when God gave me this message, I thought about, what have I run out of? My mind went back to when I was a kid. Being young, we didn't have to worry about running out. Because this was a job for our parents. All we had to do was just eat, drink, be merry, go into the refrigerator, go into the cabinets and just get what was there. But being young, we didn't have to worry about running out. So I, uh, because again, this was a job for our parents. And looking back with three brothers and three sisters, I immediately thought about uh, what did we run out of when we was little. And the first thing that came to my mind that I can remember running out of was milk milk back in the 70s and 80s milk and cereal was the bomb i mean whenever you wanted a snack or you wanted a quick bite or or you want to take something on the go with you you would grab that milk and cereal you could milk and cereal would always get the job done but one of the worst feelings that i can recall was to go into uh, get my bowl and and then set the bowl out on the table and and then i would go and get my favorite a cereal, which is Fruit Loops, and I'll pour them into the bowl, and then I'll go to the refrigerator and, and, and open the refrigerator only to find out that we didn't have any milk. Somewhere down the line, we had run out of milk. And I thought about this today when God gave me the message about what have I run out of. I know the feeling what it feel like to run out of milk. I know the feeling what it feel like you know, to run out of things that you was dependent on. And then I thought about what have I run out of as an adult? As I got older, what have I run out of? And I thought about, immediately, I thought about running out of gas. Thought about running. Have any of you ever run out of gas before? I want to believe that nothing is more embarrassing than running out of gas. And not only that, but running out of gas with money in your pockets. No reason to run out. Just embarrassing to run out of gas and, and, and have money in your pockets. I, am I the only one that have had endured this before? Had money in my pocket, no reason to run out, and, and, and find myself that I had run out of gas. And not only that, I've, I had passed a Walmart, had passed a HEB, a Exxon, a Shell, or, or whatever local convenience store it was. And I'll say to myself, you know what, I'll just wait until I get to the next town. Not only that, I, I not only said that, I will, I'll wait until I get to the next store. Next store, oh, it looks crowded. Oh, you know what, I'm almost telling I might as well just wait until I get to the next town. And so I, I took a risk. 
and I took a risk after risk and had opportunity after opportunity to get gas. Had the money, had the opportunity to get gas, but I didn't do it for whatever reason. And I found myself uh, experiencing running out of gas. And I must tell you again, that is one of the most embarrassing times, I think, in our lives can be running out of gas. And when you run out of gas, you, you ride and, you, and, and, I, and for you all that haven't experienced it, you, you're sitting in your vehicle and, and you're driving and you're riding, and whether you have your cruise on or you're accelerating it by your foot, and all of a sudden you, your vehicle start to lose power. And, and when it lose power, it's starting to go slower and slower. And, and then you realize the first thing you do, you look at your gas hand. You begin to uh, look at the, uh, the fuel gauge and realize that, you know, you have run out of fuel. And after noticing you have run out of fuel, you begin to find a safe place that you can pull into. And out of all those opportunities that I passed up, I could have had an opportunity to pull in and not only pull in, but also had an opportunity to fuel. But now I'm looking to find a place that I can pull over on the grass on the side of the road. And for me, I don't know if it's anybody else experienced this. And, and, and I pull over to the grass and, and the car goes slower and slower and it suddenly come to a stop. And then I immediately, immediately, you know what happened next? Immediately I began to hope and pray that nobody sees me. Isn't that amazing? Am I the only one guilty of that? You run out of gas, you find a safe spot, the car is barely moving, and you, you find that area on the side of the road, and you pull over, and before you can even put the car in gear, you begin to hope and pray that nobody see you. Am I the only one? Before I even think about my next plan, let me see if I have a fuel can. Let me see how far is, is can I, is it able? Am I able to walk? Let me see who I can call that can bring me some fuel before I even go into the next plan. I immediately am praying and hoping that nobody see me on the side of the road. Why? Why is that? Because running out is not only an inconvenience, but it also can be one of the most embarrassing times of your life. Running out of fuel. And as I told you, when you run out of fuel, you lose power. You can't go like you used to. You can't pass cars. You can't make those turns. You can't um, get on that toe. So and, and when you lose that power, when you run out of fuel, you've lost everything. No matter how good your car looks, how clean it is, what size engine you have, new tires, new batteries. When you run out of fuel, you run out of fuel. What about our Christian journey? What about on our Christian journey? And that's the question I asked today when I when I was reading the message, when God gave me that message, what have I run out of? And you look at the churches today with the pandemic, you know, a lot of people are using that for an excuse, you know. And, and again, you know, those things happen, but as God's words say, those things shall pass. What have I run out of before the pandemic? You know, have people stopped? praying or people stop preaching or they stop serving God had they stop going to church and, and the question I see today what have I run out of as children of God we must know that we are built to last God has made us in a special way God has called us peculiar people he has built he, he has made us and, and and created us and built us and that we are built to last we are equipped to handle every situation that come our way. We are well able to overcome every fiery dart that are aimed our way. We are equipped to win every battle we encounter if we are filled with the fruit of the Spirit. If we are filled with the fruit of the Spirit, meaning that we can't allow ourselves to run low. We can't allow ourselves to run out on the spiritual journey to continue in well doing and to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. We must make sure have, we must make sure that we don't let our spiritual light go out. We have to make sure that we don't be like the five foolish that 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 didn't have any oil at the appointed time, and they begin to ask, "Can we borrow some of your oil?" And we have to make sure that we don't let our spiritual light go out. We have to make sure that we don't run out of our spiritual energy. We must make we must have the Holy Spirit to make it on this Christian journey. I'm not sure how you answer your sermon topic today, 
what have you run out of? It's not for me to know, but I hope and pray that you took a moment to, uh, the Bible say, let a man examine himself. I hope and pray that you taken a moment, took a moment or will take time after this message to examine yourself and say to yourself, uh, what have I run out of? What have I run out of? And, you know, God has not put us in a place or position for us to judge one another. We have to examine ourselves and examine ourselves and being a part of the world. There are things that we can see and be a part of. But we don't have to be judgmental about it. And I say that to say this because there's one thing I see and there's one thing I feel in the world today that the world have run out of love. The world have run out of love. And what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, you know, love will speak for itself. It said, when I say the world have run out of love, what I'm speaking about, people don't love like they used to. People don't care like they used to. People don't share like they used to. People don't help like they used to be a time. Used to be a time growing up when, when someone seen an elder, your parents made you get out the car and go help those elders, whether you knew them or not. It used to be a time when, when when you was driving by and you seen the, the preacher or the minister or the pastor doing something, the parents would make you get out the car and go and ask if there's anything you can do, whether they're in the in the churchyard or maybe they just in town, then people just don't don't help like they used to. People don't serve like they used to. You know, we live in a world now that we only want to serve God when hardships come. We only serve God during the funeral times. We only serve God through rough times and difficult times uh, when when circumstances start happening in our lives, in our children life, in our family life. Then we, we decide that we want to serve God. We have to serve God in spite of. As I said earlier, people don't serve like they used to. Uh, don't sing and don't pray. Don't, don't even preach like they used to. Reason being why? Because they have run out of love. What a sad situation. What a sad place to be when you run out of love. You know, you look at marriages and a lot of times when people say they don't love one another, they run out of love and they, they divorce and they go into different areas and different parts of the world and try different things. It's just like the word of God said, we can't divorce ourselves. We can't run out of love and allow ourselves to be divorced from God. We have to be like Apostle Paul say, I let nothing separate me from the love of my God. As children of God, we must have love to make it on this Christian journey. We have to have love to make it on this Christian journey. I remember growing up, I used to hear a song and hear people say, money is what make the world go round. And I, I, I beg to differ. I, I have a different word in that. You know, I think it's love that makes the world go round. We are here today and forgiven of our sins and given a right to the tree of, of life because of love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Make no mistake about it. God never run out. Make no mistake about it. God never run out. His grace is sufficient. His love is sufficient. His his passion is sufficient. His forgiveness is sufficient. Whatever we need, our God have what we need. The question today is our sermon topic, what have I run out of? You know, it's not what the what you think you have run out of, what someone else said. Yeah, say, let a man examine himself, see what you have run out of. And whatever it is, your God have what you need. Whatever you have run out of or running low on, your God have what you need. It's time for you to let God take care of your refills. Isn't that good news? It's time for you to let God take care of your refills. Whatever you're running low on, or perhaps whatever you run out of, you need to let God take care of your refills. I don't know what you have run out of today. I don't know what you're about to run out of later today or tomorrow or next week, but I can assure you, whatever it is, my God have what you need. You can trust God to take care of all of your refills. We can't run this Christian race running on low. We can't run this Christian race running on empty. We must be filled with the fruit of the Spirit 
to endure to the end. For the Bible says those that endure to the end are the ones that shall be saved. I ask two questions today, church, and our message today. How do I know when I have run out of spiritual fuel? You know, how do I know when I have run out of spiritual fuel? I gave an example of what it was like to run out of, of fuel in my automobile. And, and I said it earlier. When you don't love like you used to love, you run out of spiritual fuel. When you don't serve like you used to serve, when you don't praise God like you used to praise him, when you don't pray like you used to uh, pray, meaning what you have pulled over to the side of the road. You are pulled over to the side of the road in your Christian journey, just like you would do on Highway 79, just like you would do on 95, just like you would do on I-35 or any other road. When you run out of fuel, you just pull over. And that's what I see in the world that a lot of Christians have run out of spiritual fuel and they have just pulled over. But they have come to a point that they have retired. They have come to a point they want to let the next generation do it. They have come to a point that they've gotten too old to do it. We're never too old to serve God. We're never too old to retire on God's program. We have to understand that we run out of spiritual fuel just like that car that's on the grassy road. We, they pull over on that grass side. But thanks be unto God, we don't have to be embarrassed. Thanks be to God, we don't have to be inconvenienced. Thanks be to God that we don't have to call anyone to bring us spiritual fuel. Whatever you have run out of, regardless where you have run out, regardless where you have run out, God will come and meet you at your point of need. He will refill you spiritually. God will get you back on track again. This morning, church, the question is asked, what have you run out of? Understanding today that, that we can't run this Christian race on empty. We should for surely the world, our jobs, our families, the adversary, people, problems, and circumstances can cause us to run on empty. And this is God gives us an example today as I close being a cup. And as we symbolize cups in God's sight, God is reminding us today that he won our cups on fuel. His word states in Psalms 23, thy cup run it over. As long as God has given us the refills, we don't have to worry about running low. As God has given us, as long as God has given one, giving us our refills, we don't have to worry about running on empty. Psalms 23, God say he will prepare a table in the presence of our enemies. God will anoint our head with oil. God will make our cups run it over. And when God gives the refill, surely, when God gives a refill, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life. What have you run out of today, church? What are you running empty on? Because running on empty will cause you, running on low will eventually cause you to run on empty. And when you run on empty, no matter how well you dress, no matter what people say about you, no matter how long you've been serving God, no matter how long you've been in the church, when you lose your spiritual fuel, You'll pull over just like that car on the road. And then you begin to hear people begin to say what I used to do, what they used to do, how well they used to sing, how well they used to preach, how well they used to pray, how they used to help, how they used to be a beacon in the neighborhood, how they used to share. When you run out of fuel, those things go away. What have you run out of? The dirt day church, whatever you have run out of, oh God is willing and ready to give refill. I pray and trust that you allow God to give you the refill that you need to endure this Christian race. Pray and trust that God's word has been uplifting to you. And I always say a blessing is not a blessing unless you share it with someone else. I ask you not to hide thy word in our heart today, but share the word with someone else so that they may be knowledgeable of what they have run out of and allow God to give them the refill, because his grace is sufficient. God bless you this day.